All right, welcome back to another edition of I'm Making Wands on the Lathe. And today we are going to do a wand out of birch. Um, I kind of like this wood. It's not my favorite. Uh, I like that it's, you know, a nice pale, um, a light colored wood to work with. Um, it's a little bit softer than I prefer. Uh, and uh, doesn't it doesn't finish as easily as some of the other woods, but... Anyway, so let's jump into it here. Uh, I am right now just getting this in the round. Um, I've already got my blank cut, and I'm uh, getting the starting. Always start, start with the tip here when I work on wands. Um, and that's, again, because I like to go nice and thin on these. And uh, in order to do that, I start, I start with the tip and then feed that into some chuck jaws that I'll swap out here in a minute. Um, and I, again, I'll, I'm going to talk a little bit about um, the thickness of my wands. I, I really, again, I try to go for a more elegant, thin, refined um, wand as opposed to a big, clunky uh, chunk. Um, the thicker, ma making a wand thicker is easier to do because you can leave the, the whole wand exposed and just work it from one end to the other. Um, and, you know, it stays pretty rigid uh, in a lathe. But... Um, I just, I just don't like the look of it. I really like a more refined shape. Um, but when you get that thin blade, uh, again, these are about the size of a Sharpie at the thickest part of the blade. Um, the whole wand, the thickest part of the whole wand is never more than three quarters of an inch, usually a little bit thinner, um, narrower than three quarters of an inch, like at, at the handle at the thickest parts. So getting it, getting it thin like this, um, the only way that I found to do that without the blade flexing and, you know, causing chatter and catches and possibly snapping the wand is to actually swap out and put this in the chuck jaws. And I, you know, with practice, I've been able to get it pretty true and, um, you know, rechucked up to stay um, pretty centered in there. But I do go back over this a, a few times every time I move it and just kind of make sure that I'm still nice and centered in my in my chuck jaws. Um but again, working working the blade down, um, getting that pretty close to just about the size of a fine point sharpie marker, so that these will fit in my wand holsters. Um, and I actually use a a fine point sharpie to shape the wand holsters, so that I know that all my wands are going to fit properly um, in the holsters. So. Doing a lot of magic here. I've got this sped up 400%, uh, and I'm also editing out quite a bit because uh, a lot of it's rather repetitive. Uh, and I do enjoy watching wood turning videos online, um, but sometimes, you, you know, frankly, I, there's probably a, an hour and a half um, of footage on this one, maybe two hours, um, just because this is a special edition. And, you know, I think I spent. 30 minutes just do it the wood burning part so we'll get to that um, here in a minute so now that I've got the the blade of the wand pretty well um, worked out I'm now marking out um, where the other parts of the wand are going to be and again I treat it like a sword um, so I have a pommel I have a grip uh, I have a guard and then I have a blade um, from the bottom of the pommel up to the base of the blade where it connects uh, is about four inches. Um, unlike a sword, I don't have to have a defined uh, like quillion cross guard there like a like a sword has to have. So I do, there is kind of that gray area where you can have that transition between the grip into the blade um, where it's a more decorative. Um, but I, I do like like it to show definition between, um, you know, the, the blade there and have a nice transition so that you, you know, you see all the parts. So uh, kind of play a little bit with the skew on this and I'm going into um, my spindle detail gouge. Um, just putting in a bead here in the center of the handle. Uh, then I'm gonna work um, the, the rest of the handle out and uh, I this is I use this tool like but this and my spindle roughing gouge are like my go-to tools for probably 90% of the wand 
um, I, I find the spindle roughing gouge works great to get, you know get it in the round, get it um, break broken down to the right size. That's that's this larger tool right here, um, and you know work quick large areas. And then that spindle detail gouge that I have is really nice um, for doing some more detail work in there. Um, I I do use the skew some. Uh, I want to get a better skew. It's a little bit thick and chunky, and for doing these really fine. Uh, delicate works I find the thickness of it actually hides like it's hard to see where I'm cutting because I'm doing such fine detail work so anyways we're um, getting the basic shape of the grip worked in here um, and then I'm gonna kind of start shaping the pommel here and kind of putting like a, a pommel nut on the on the back of this and we'll see that uh, come out towards the end um, one of the things about birch um, that is a little different, I I like I've been really using this new um, coloring technique uh, with that uh, it's called an ebonizing solution, which reacts with the tannins in the wood. And unfortunately, birch does not have a lot of tannin. And I found uh, just on my test pieces that it almost has no color change at all. So we're really kind of limited uh, with our color options. If we if we want to change the color of this, I do like to have, you know, some uh, color changing uh, on uh, on the wands so that it's just not all one color. And there's three or four ways um, that I found uh, that that work that I've used to do this. Um, one of them is burning. Um, and that can be done either with friction burning or with a torch where you literally blacken, you char the wood, um, which has its, its benefits. It, you know, it, you know, it's part of the wood, so it's not something that rubs off. You know, once you take the loose char and stuff off there, you can certainly oil that uh, and clean it up uh, and, and make it nice. Uh, it's not perfectly even and with softer woods like birch, uh, it's really hard to do that with a torch because it burns so easily and so quickly uh, that it can definitely um, mess up uh, because it doesn't burn evenly. Um, one of the other problems with you with burning uh, with a torch is um, the heat can warp the wood so it'll make the wand not as straight so if you're trying to do like uh, something on the blade of the wand especially where you know you heat it up um, to get a kind of some char marks going up of it. it you can get the color on it but it can start warping um, and I find that to be a problem and the uh, the last thing about it is it really makes the wood thirsty so when you put oil on it and stuff it really sucks it up uh, the other option is of course wood stain um, but that really just makes one wood look like a another uh, because most of your wood stains out there are you know like you know, walnut and mahogany and stuff like that and so if you're trying to make like birch look like walnut you can do that but I'd rather you know just use walnut or something um, so they're really just all different shades of brown mostly um, so I try I try to I tend to stay away from wood stain um, right now I'm just doing a bunch of um, sanding here and uh, now I'm going to do the friction burn. This is this is the wire. The wire works really great to put defined lines in there, um, and then you you know, you just brush the char out. Um, another way to color the wood is to use uh, wood dye. Um, I've used dye that is made specifically for wood and had kind of not great luck with it. It just doesn't look um, like the colors are not as vibrant. Um, that you know they don't. They're not as clean. I just, I don't know. I just didn't like it, and I had a difficult time with it. So I do use an alcohol-based dye when I when I dye. Um, the few times I do it, but the problem with dye is that can rub off on your hand. So um, with this one, I'm sticking primarily with um, burning as my coloring technique. And you can see right here, I'm doing fr friction burn, and I'm just using a scrap piece of walnut um, that I like pretty well for doing the do it with uh, friction burns and I've just shaped a, you know the scrap a little bit on a belt sander to kind of get some different stuff uh, different shapes in there so I can get into you know all the different crevices that I want um, the friction burning again it's a little bit tough because it doesn't make a super even burn especially on the softer woods but it does work pretty well um, and it gives it a nice you know aged um, charred look and then, uh, you know, again, we'll, we have to go in and sand out um, 
you know, get you get the loose char off and then you kind of smooth it out because the the charring does kind of leave a it, it can kind of get gummy, especially with an oily wood. Uh, gosh, when you're I, I know do it wood burning um, maple. Uh, I, I've, you know, there's enough oils and stuff in there that sometimes it can actually get gummy when you char it, but maple does char really nicely as well. Um, so now again, this is a special edition. Uh, one of the reasons it's a special edition is because I take the extra time to go in and, uh, do some fancy design work on it. Uh, and I'm going to use my pyrography, uh, which is a, a fancy wood burning kit that has different tips. So I'm marking out. It's a, a, a grid pattern. It helps me keep my designs um, even uh, for this particular design. I'm going with uh, just little burned in dots, um, which I always tell myself I'm not going to do anymore because it's extremely time consuming to do. Um, but I like the look of it, so I always end up doing it again anyways. Um, so this is this is heavily edited for time here. Um, and, and besides, I think from this camera angle, you, I, my hand covers it up quite a bit of the time anyways. Uh, but yeah, literally all I'm doing is going in on that grid and um, burning in these little little um, burnt dots um, on the wood itself. And I, I, I do like the way that this looks, though. Um, I just wish that I could do it a little bit faster uh, because, you know, doing things like this really increases the... It, when it increases the time, it increases the cost. So, um, I wish I could sell my, all my ones for really cheap because I really enjoy making them. But I unfortunately I can't afford to keep making them unless people would like to buy them. So it helps me fund uh, making more wants. So if you're interested in these, I I do uh, try to put a link to my um, Etsy shop. I've got like uh, gosh, I think I'm up to 13 or 14 different kinds of wood. Um, I'm always looking for, you know, new kinds of wood um, that, you know, I, I'm kind of a big uh, Wizarding World fan myself and, you know, wand making is uh, wonderful. I'd love to get my hands on some of the woods um, from that too. Um, unfortunately, some are really quite expensive uh, or hard to come by. Uh, right now, Purple Heart is a nightmare to get. So anyway, sanding off the pencil lines and smoothing that up. And then um, I'm just using an old rag, old sock here. Um, the cotton, I really found the cotton kind of like does a pre-burnish. Uh, you can get a little bit of a shine to it. Um, and that's kind of nice. And then here we're going to do, again, this always makes me nervous. I'm, I'm taking the tenon off, off the backside of the pommel. And this is where it actually cuts off there and... You'll see it here just kind of boop and um, always know that I've got a good straight wand whenever I take this off and boop, it just stays like nice and centered in there. But now it's not supported on this end, so I have to be really careful and support it with my hand. Um, and of course, when it's spinning that fast, you got to be careful not to squeeze too hard because, you know, it will burn and burn your hands from the friction. So um, adding a little bit of friction burn here to uh, the part that I just cut off so that the color matches. And, you know, again, cleaning that up with uh, a little bit of sandpaper um, and burnishing. And now I've got this chucked up and I've got some scrap pieces here that I've um, put different sized holes and tapers in so that I can put the entirety of the wand um, without, you know, it's just pressure holding it in there. So I don't turn this up very fast because it's not perfectly centered this way. Um, but I can turn it on a lower speed and that does allow me to do some things like sanding, finishing, burnishing, uh, as long as I'm not putting a lot of pressure on the wand so it doesn't pop out of there. Uh, but this is much lower speed um, and I'm not, uh, I'm not torquing it a whole lot. And uh, also when I'm doing things like, um, like right now I'm burnishing or doing oil uh when i turn this on i always have pressure on e equal pressure on both sides to keep it centered so but this is just a nice um boiled linseed oil finish again and i you know again i really enjoy the natural look of the wood um this you know it it, it feels nice in a hand it you know it's the all the wood grain is there it's not covered up um this gets the oil finish. It has to dry for a while. And you can see I've got some close-ups here of it. Um, and then once the, the oil is dry, then I just simply wax um, wax the wand. Um, so you get a finished wand like this. 
So yeah, there it is. Uh, Birch wand, um, special edition. A couple of photos here of it uh, that I uh, uploaded onto my Etsy site, so you can kind of get a good close up and see how that looks. Um, I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, if you did, give me a thumbs up and subscribe. Uh, I am posting more videos soon. I've got uh, four different wands in production right now, and those are um, house uh, magical house colored inspired wands for you HP fans out there. And so there's um, four different ones that will be up on Etsy, and I do have a couple of them that I'm doing videos of because I do it. I did some different techniques um, and glued some different woods together, and so I hope you'll uh, come back and watch that one. Anyways, thanks for watching. And uh, don't forget to subscribe. Come back and see us.